Hello, confused cycling fans, and welcome to How the Die Hard Was Won. How the race was die... I'm not actually calling it that. I bet you're wondering right now, why am I doing this? I mean, no one disputes that Die Hard is an awesome movie, right? At least awesome in the sense of one of those really enormous cheeseburgers or a car being launched into space. But the more I watch this movie, the more I realize it's actually really good. And sure, it was a successful movie at its time. It helped shift the focus of Hollywood from family-bait E.T. knockoffs to mid-twenties males with disposable income and a need for escapist hyper-masculine fantasy that video games and streaming channels were still decades away from fulfilling. But as a result of this, Die Hard gets almost lost in a decade and a half of sweaty dude against the universe action flicks, many of which were obvious and not particularly good imitations of it. Passenger 57 was Die Hard on a plane. Under Siege was Die Hard on a boat. Cliffhanger was Die Hard on a good quantity of steroids and a surprisingly compelling performance from John Lithgow. But you know, there's a reason, a lot of reasons actually, why if you're under the age of 30, you haven't heard of any of these films, but you most certainly do know Die Hard. Not only did it kick down the last of Hollywood's resistance to a variety of arthouse production techniques, but it integrated and played off of thematic material we're still wrestling with today. Technological advancement, an increasingly global marketplace, economic uncertainty, terrorism, mistrust of authority, information security, women's rights, immigration, race, and even accountability for law enforcement. There are rules for policemen. It's also a time capsule, a slice of the 1980s so pure and true that it transcends the spoof and stereotype to which the decade is so prone. And maybe better than any other movie I can think of, it's an example of how truly bizarre and marvelous the film development process can be. I mean, the Die Hard script began life as a film adaptation of a depressing print sequel to a hard-boiled detective novel that became a Frank Sinatra film in 1968. I wrote that, and I'm not even sure what I just said. Die Hard has tiny, brilliant tidbits added by people at every level of the production process, from lowly anonymous interns to 80s Uber producer Joel Silver himself. I defy you to find a film that better represents the art form's inescapable nature as a thing created by everyone involved in it where no one person is really in control. So for each of the next 12 days, that, who am I kidding, it's gonna take me more than 12 days. Also, did my hair just get longer? I'd like to peel back a tiny door into what I think makes this film so cool and enduring and unique. A mini die-hard advent calendar, so to speak. It won't cover absolutely everything, but hopefully enough stuff to deepen our collective appreciation of what I unironically insist is one of the true Hollywood classics. I'm Cosmo Catalano. Until next time, yippee ki motherfucker. The weather outside is frightful. But the fire is...